Hello everyone. So I made a video about nail school and I'm going to go through my story and it is a 30 year journey and it has been incredibly difficult to pick up aspects and find the gems that will teach you. And I was going to go straight into um, the shops that I worked at and the people that I met, but then Yesterday, I went to go and see the Joker at the movie theaters as a way to maybe do a Joker uh, set of nails. And it was so bafflingly accurate and so meaningful that I have to talk about the dark side and what some of you guys might be going through because I know that I went through it. Um, going through nail school and feeling less than and, and being thrown out into a shop where you end up getting clients that tell you all of their problems and secrets and um, their stories that come at you over time wear at you and when you're so young and you've already failed at other things and you're trying so hard to stay at this job that seems like it tears you down you become a little crazy. Now, add that with a bad childhood and add that with um, not knowing how to fully understand or help others makes it all the worse. And there isn't anyone that is helping us with this, that no one is standing up and saying what it is. They just are selling products to you. And these products are, so let, let me talk about that later. Um, what I do want to talk about is dark sides and how they and how they manifest. So until 2015, um, I was at my own desk with my own clients doing my job in a corner by myself and I only had one-on-one -on -one contact. I had very little other than that and so over the years I have learned how to become a great listener and how to take in stories but not share my own. And um, so I want to just talk of, about a few things. Um, when I first started, I was just, I had no, I was lawless. I, I, every, I had started in 2015 to make a documentary about my life and there are still, uh, there's still a lot of footage out there that maybe someday um, someone will edit and put together so you can see the first hand um, accounts of who I was and where I come from but I was very angry and I was a different person than I am now it's it's evolved and it it wasn't easy I've been in therapy for eight years I still go every Monday um, in my career I have lost and gained a hundred pounds three times and I've lost 200 pounds and kept it off for 10 years um, that is a journey within itself, but it's because of all of these other things. And so I'm going to try when, when clients, when you get to, you know, 50, 60, 70 clients and they're, you know, hourly and you're working six days a week and everyone is telling you their stories and it's just one after the other. And you notice that all of the stories are bad because Others don't have places to vent, and we are those places. Our stations are the sanctuaries for their stories, and we are the vessels that they tell their stories to. And we are looking down, and we are performing a skill that makes them feel beautiful at the same time that they're telling us their stories. And we have to engage those stories. And sometimes the stories are horrifying and and you love the people so desperately that are telling you these stories and you don't know what to do with them and at the end of the day when you get home you have this knot in your stomach and you go to take a shower and you just start crying and you don't know how to expel the stories you don't know how to clear your mind and not let that affect your day the next day for the next amount of stories and I didn't know how to do that and they all piled up and I had 
oh my gosh, such breakdowns in my career, such breakdowns, different types to where I didn't let anybody know anything was wrong and I just kept stuffing it down and stuffing it down. And then other times where I would try to vent and then see like that blank look that the other person wasn't getting it at all and feeling utterly alone and not having family because, you know, my mom, if I told her a story, she would try and top it, you know, and all of my accomplishments that I did get, like if I was in the newspaper or if I um, was in the news or, you know, if my nails had made it anywhere outside of the shop, my mom would take those and use them to pump up her own you know accomplishments and so so like it was almost like I shared my accomplishments but I couldn't share any of the pains and so when my mother passed away I I started into counseling and um, trying to get um, uh, my sleep disorder under control I have what is called REM sleep disorder and night terrors and I have since I was five years old and they are pretty much a ruler of my life if I don't get proper sleep or if I don't um, stay with the plans that I'm given I walk in my sleep and I do lots of crazy things in my sleep and I hurt myself and so I never got to like sleep and take naps with my kids or anything <laughs> I'm a crazy sleeper so anyways I am in therapy still, and I just want to share some of these things with you because at first I turned to drugs when I, when I was doing nails. Um, at night I would do drugs to forget, or I would um, just just take a Xanax to like relax, and and everything was pretty much under control. And then I got pregnant, and when I got pregnant with Ty, um, I I couldn't do anything except for you know like just listen to those stories and it was it was building and building and so I turned to food and when you're making money and and by then I was making some money um, I started turning to food and and I wasn't I didn't have my nightmares under um, control and I started gaining weight pretty fast and then after I had Thai, I tried to do drugs to get off the weight and I tried the Fen Fen to get off the weight. But all of these things were just me trying to stop that pain, like push it down, push it down, push it down. And none of those things worked. It just made me awful. The Topafen diet, that, that was horrible. It made me lose my mind. My sleep was crazy. All of the things I turned to, that's when I started drinking really strong coffee in the morning, like four shots in the morning, six shots in the morning, you know, just, just more and more and more to deal, to, to, like, to like focus, to not have feelings and to listen and to listen. And I was pushing my feelings down, but also was becoming more and more invisible. I was making myself invisible. Um, my clients became more important than myself and their stories were more important than mine. And I just became smaller and smaller of a voice and presence that accompanying with the fact that my mother never allowed me to build my own voice really stunted my progress socially. And um, I just became a yes man to everything. And the only thing that I knew was that when I read things about the nail life that I was reading about in magazines, it was not matching my life at all. And what I started to see was that every single page had promotions on it. And that that was when that was when I really started to think, what are they promoting and, and what am I doing? And I really started to mix my own colors um, in the first five years of my craft. It became um, kind of common for me just to do that and I never got the opportunity to create anything under my name from 2015 on because I saw that being in that part of the nail world was not for me it isn't it's not horrible but it's just not for me I'm too much of a loner I am too quiet I am too uh, I love my quietude too much and it was um, very hustly and bustly and that mixed with my mental state and my um, my need for calm just didn't it just clashed you know and so so I wanted to talk about that the ability to motivate others 
is what came out of my YouTube channel. I had no idea that I would have the ability to motivate others. I thought that I was just teaching others. And so I kind of kept away from the motivational part of it because I felt like motivational speakers all say the same thing and I thought everybody knows it, but um, they don't. And um, I have been sort of like a reluctant type of leader. Um, I don't I don't know exactly what it is that I wanted to say and, and it is through intense therapy all these years to where I even felt like I had the right to have a voice, you know? Um, and so I want to say that no matter who you are, your nail, you're a nail technician and you are on your own journey. You will never have problems with these things or you might. But what I'm saying is that if you do, you have to be a vessel that just listens with empathy. You just listen with empathy all day. You listen and you don't take it in all the way to your heart and bone and marrow because those people that are just venting to you, they might not be taking it too seriously at all. And then you're taking it way more seriously and building yourself into a frenzy for no reason. And that is what I felt that, like I did is that um and i don't want you guys to make this mistake especially when going into a first nail shop and trying to get your first clientele is that you are a sounding board for others to speak into and then at the end you make that person leave feeling beautiful and that would be a major goal for anyone trying to make it long term in this industry because without that you're never going to have people that come back to you. Yeah. I've worked with like a lot of people that you look around the shops that you work at and the people that are telling their problems to everyone, um, all their clients over and over and over again, you start as, as someone sitting next to somebody that is telling their problem over and over again all day, you begin to see that that person is not getting well, they're only getting worse and you're going to see them losing clients they don't come back because they don't want to come back to a bunch of drama they want to come back to a, a, a nest where they feel safe and where they can laugh and where they can leave feeling like they have vented and been heard and feel lovely and everyone that i worked with that that used to talk about their problems they ended up quitting the business and the ones who always had a great business had clients who told great stories and we all listened to them. And some of my favorite clients weren't even my clients. They were like getting their hair done, but they always told a great story. And so I have tons of these stories and I'm gonna tell them in, in uh, my stories. I'm gonna just share some stuff that's gone on in my world during my time. Um, in in shops from you know the bottom shops all the way to the top shops all the way to um, the the industry and and when I when I say industry um, I am talking about the people who say they care but at the end they don't they don't care they care about the newest product and they give you these products to um to kind of what would be a good well they uh, like a brand ambassador of this product and and when you are using this product you're supposed to talk about this product but what if this product is awful you know then you are promoting this product and then the next one comes around and then the next one comes around and you never get your skills built you never get your speed built up your speed is number one in this business your ability to create a beautiful nail in a short amount of time and listen is the way to success in this business if no one has told you that yet please know that that is number one and don't let anyone else tell you different don't read anything different and if you see it said you're gonna see a product being sold beneath it you don't need those products your amount of products you need is very limited and I am not gonna sell those products to you and 
unless I know that the people that are making them really have my back and have the same vision as I do. Otherwise, they can just go ahead like the old days. I feel like there's a new day coming to where there's going to be shops that are fun again and they're full of people that are spending money and having a good time and it's not just about products because there are so many different products on the market now that I get confused and I don't want to learn how to use those products because to me it's just one more thing I have to learn and then for what so that I don't get an extra tip because I took 15 extra minutes on somebody and made them late for another appointment my clients have lives they're busy people some of them drive four hours to see me and I am responsible for my time my time is my money and it also is my life and my free time and learning that is an art you can't learn that in one day. You're gonna spend three hours filing. You're gonna spend five hours on a set of nails. And that's the time that you invest. Consider that an investment for later when you can really enjoy the time you have with your clients and you don't have to take on their pains, that you're free from their pains and that you have a voice but you can't let it oversaturate their voices it, you, they are paying you to sit in that chair you are not paying them and so when they're paying you you listen and that is a that is something that I enjoy more than anything in fact when when clients come the first thing I say is please please tell me a story and get me out of my own and I want to hear them and the bigger the better and the more crazy the better and i have so many crazy stories over the years i mean you will not believe the stuff i have heard and i promise i will not say one name or <laughs> get anybody who is um guilty in trouble because because it's it's about the story and it's about laughter and and it is about truly making comedy out of a tragedy and i grew up without um, parents, I grew out, uh, grow up without, you know, a lot of friends. Um, I've always kind of been a loner. I have a few friends that I keep all the time, but I'm mostly a loner. And and my clients are my family and friends. And some some of my my best friends have hurt me the most, and uh, my family has hurt me the most. And yet here I am, and I'm still laughing. And and I do see something beautiful about every single person now, but that's through years and years of therapy. And um, something that my therapist has taught me is to ask yourself four questions. Is, is it true? Can you believe it's true? What do you feel when you think that thought? And who would you be without it? And if you can't believe that it's 100% true, then just skip it and move on. Do not carry those thoughts with you. If they do not enhance your life, get rid of them. Get rid of them and do not look back. Learn how to polish nails faster. Learn how to do the acrylic faster, the gel, whatever you're using. And try and be mindful. What am I using? Can I use it in a, in a more inexpensive way so I can make more money? So I don't have to rely on 40 brands. So that I don't have to rely on 40 different tools. You know, I mean, as soon as there's 40, then there's 80. And then there's 160. And everybody is getting just a little bit of money. But at least everybody is getting a little bit of money instead of just one company getting all the money while we're all just slaves to a magazine that tells us what is cool when it really isn't. I have never seen that many trends in the magazines go anywhere and the ones that do are only to a select group of people. And I will talk about that later in my stories. but. It has never affected my success. My success is that I have women waiting to get in with me that are all over the world and around the corner will drive any amount of time. If I wanted to go to another country and do a set of nails, I could get somebody to fly me there and get me get me set up and do their nails. Like anything that I can imagine is possible for me just because of the time that I spent trying to get that five hour set of nails down to four hours and then the three hours and then the two hours and what I'm learning now is to use my voice in concert with that so that you can understand that my days are 
were they were filled with just back breaking uh, amounts of um, focus that that my hours that I spent learning how to do portraits tinier and tinier and tinier is just thousands of hours of practice. My first Martin Luther King portrait took me four hours and now I think I can do him in 15 minutes with my eyes closed. <laughs> I've painted him so many times, but every time that I paint him, I learn something new and every time that I finish, I feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. And every time that I take them off in two weeks, I feel a sadness. And that is the circle of life. And that is the beauty in the tragedy, the comedy in the tragedy. And even though I have so much in common with, with those that should not be successful, I also have so much in common with those that are successful. And it is my duty to stay positive and think of myself as a success. My success is not based on how much my shoes costed. It's not how, much, how many bags I have. And it's not how much I brag about what I have gained because what I have gained will, I will lose in time that with old age, you, you lose everything, you know, really. And the, the most that you can keep with you is love and your memories. And I want my memories to be good. And that's why I go to therapy every Monday. And that is why I, every time I make a video, I imagine that I'm talking to a 13 year old girl with no mentors and is very angry. I always talk to her because my first instinct is to start cussing and yelling and ranting and raving and saying that this person is horrible. But really, we're all just trying to make our way no matter how rich or how poor and when I first started to get into this industry someone told me that one of the top people in um, a brand was almost a hundred years old and completely alone and had no friends and to me that was my highest fear was to have gone through all of these stories and pushed down all of my pain only to be left alone because I had never resolved it and I believe that I have resolved it in so many ways and watching this movie yesterday the Joker and the way when you push down your dark side what can happen and how to integrate that dark side into your life so that you can be free to be like truly free in any situation and have the people that understand you most stand behind you. That is a, a powerful thing that you can not only take with you and pass to others and uplift others, but you can resolve anything that comes your way. I mean, it's really perspective. And if, if this is too much, I'm apologizing because it really affected me this movie because you don't you don't want to get so overwhelmed and downtrodden that you never realize your full potential and i did not know how to paint nails like this when i first started it was through a ton of hours served in a place where i was on the floor on my stomach trying to paint nail art on toenails and that will be a story for the future but that is what i did for a long long time and and in shops that i was i don't know it was just a lot of things that could have been better if we had a system that helped lift us up more and i and i know that i've noticed that in our industry there it's like Paul, Paul Mitchell, for example, like Paul Mitchell, he, he thought of a brand and he went and marketed it and they financed him and then he opened schools and now there's hairdressers and, and they took care of each other and they built up these brands together that were helpful and that taught people but nobody did that for nails and now all of the schools are kind of crumbling and a lot of people don't even know if schools are even make a difference i don't think they make a difference to tell you the truth but you do need a mentor i know that to be true as well without a mentor or schooling then you're just set off into i mean you could just cause a lot of problems but 
I, I don't know that my nail school helped me at all and it costed a fortune and I know they're all privately owned and mine is out of business. I don't know what they did with my money. I know that it took me 10 years to pay off my school loan for something that took me three months to accomplish and it was all like pretty much fake and nobody really lifted us up at all, no one. My kit was full of stuff I didn't need and um, that was when there was no such thing as a lot of products. So I have no idea how awful they are now. I just know that they must be much, much more confusing. And so I say to you, find a mentor and watch my videos. They're there for mentoring. I want nothing other than that. And that there are voices out there that are fighting for you and seeing some of the top people in our industry be thrown to the side as soon as a job closes and just forgotten is appalling to me, especially when they put in 20, 30 years. And I know that most other jobs don't do that, that we're not afforded insurance and time off or, or 401ks, nothing. I took five days off with my daughter and um, was under incredible strain with a clientele list of 120 women. 120. Not all of them were full-time and a lot of them flew in from other uh, uh, states to just get painted by me, but it was, in, in, and there was no cell phones to book that. It was all in a real, using a real phone and a real book, and so it was intense work. And, uh, and I want anybody who understands those numbers knows the intense work I'm speaking about. And I want to prepare you guys for that type of success would be the word I don't even know if that is success it's crazy town is what it is and um, nobody should have to work that hard but I did have to work that hard in order to get my craft down and so I kind of was driven you know but at the same time if I had integrated the dark side and and known about letting it go all the stories letting them wave in and when you're walking into your home you leave it at the doorknob. You just you just say, okay, I am not gonna take this with me into my home. And you take a breath and you let it go. Every day I do that to this day. And when you let it go, you take a deep breath and you breathe in your life. And that is your life and you do not think about nails. I've taken on extra nails in YouTube because I felt it was necessary. And Someday, I will just let it all go and be completely free, but for right now, I feel like I got some more fighting to do. <laughs> ah. So I'm gonna tell the stories, and they're gonna be great stories, and they're gonna be weird stories, but I wanna say thank you to the makers of The Joker because it really did, it really was true and into form, and I felt it very deeply. It was well-written, and the cinematography was fantastic. The mise-en-scene was spectacular the timing everything was just beautifully made and um, I was very surprised and I just it made me start thinking and I'm like oh gosh well until I talk about my first shop I'm gonna talk about this and so I leave you with a huge thank you a huge debt of gratitude to everyone who is learning and listening to me and to know that I am in your corner and I'm fighting that I don't believe in um, a lot of what is being sold to you and what I do believe in is your sheer will to succeed and your and the beauty that you create because I see it every day on my boards the beauty you create hashtag inspired by Robin Moses so that I can see what you're doing from my tutorials that gives me the the will to fight and anything that you want me to talk about in regards to um, the the industry and shops dealing with other clients or other co-workers anything you tell me so that I can I can say oh my gosh I totally forgot about that I had to overcome that this is what happened and because I truly don't know this is 30 years now so it's all just a jumble and that's why it's so hard for me but I do believe that there are answers and that kind people will start coming into my comment section and they will help you too anyone who gives you any kind of like you know I've already been like banned from all the magazines and stuff I am not in the in the cool group so so you know there's no reason to hate in the comments you know like I'm just gonna delete them you know and so just know that just know that, that I don't care about being popular with anyone that I will delete all of that madness 
and competition that that anybody that's competing right now is just a ridiculous clown themselves and um, that we need to come together more than ever and create nests of hope and, and comfort to ourselves and each other right now more than ever so share this video and thank you for listening i will see you back with more